Hello, John Neal here, sign writer, calligrapher maybe. I'm going to throw in man of the world this time as well because after all these uh, videos are easily distributed all over the world by YouTube and um, I've just changed my signature on my emails to the earth is but one country and mankind is citizens and I think the Olympics which is just finishing here in England um, sort of demonstrates that we've got all this, these people from all over the world come to compete in the Olympics and it's a beautiful variety of peoples from all walks of life and it's terrific to see. Anyway, the, a lady from the USA called Gillian, hello Gillian, hi, how are you? Um, not quite sure where you are in the States, you'll no doubt let me know, um, has written to me, emailed and said that she's just starting off in lettering and that gave me a thought that uh, I ought to maybe say something about the very start of what uh, the lettering means to me whether it's handwriting calligraphy or big poster work handwriting after all is something that everybody learns to do everybody who is literate the first thing they do is to learn to write and handwriting then if it's to become more decorative you might then say becomes uh, calligraphy and the calligraphy is done with a special pen maybe or in what I prefer is a, a special brush and I've shown this before and I've got some examples here of the things I would do with a brush and in fact some of my lettering work anyway is with a brush here's some more this one's a, interesting it's a different uh, just a block capital rather than the flowing uh, script with um, the larger work like uh, this board here for instance, then these larger shapes and letters are more a movement of the whole arm. So there's a distinct difference in moving up to this size. And one way you can do this is to practice on bigger pieces of paper, even newspaper. But I'll show you what I mean. Okay, let's start from scratch really. Here's a pen, a bit of paper. Now, of course you might start your lettering world off with simply writing as a child might the alphabet then the tendency is as you mature that the, the letters are joined in places and so you get more of a speedier line and it tends to move forwards a bit after all <coughs> if you take these <laughs> shapes the childlike work is a little bit like that but as you mature and the lettering gets a little bit quicker you tend to get a cartoon effect of a bit like a car that might have gone it has a movement from left to right so this movement um, in the letters and the shapes is important of course, it, I suppose we can never uh, ignore the fact that a lot of the lettering relies on artistic um, elements of shape um, and pattern and movement and overall design. So anyway, that's how um, some of your lettering might start off. And I'm, I'm only using what you could pick up, which is a pen and some paper. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Clock. Um, the next part of lettering might well be to move on to the capitals. Now, these, of course, as I've explained before, um, come from the Roman uh, lettering system and the Roman alphabet. And they, the first development of this, you might say, is to take this thin line, which you can only do with a pen, is to make it thicker so 
that downstroke I'll show you with this specialized pen this is a calligraphy pen and it is both thin and then thick that way so it goes thin that way thick that way because of the shape of it what the Romans did of course was to make that the thin that the thick so all the letters particularly let's say the curved letters would then get this beautiful rounded and shaped form so the letter C they have to be done reasonably quickly to get the form you like and of course you can end up with some certain flush so E would just look like this but then if you take it a little bit quite simple to do this sort of thing and you could spend hours just going over the whole alphabet just doing this ah now before I go <coughs> much further let me just explain about the way that you might sit you need to sit comfortably and hold the pen in a particular way I see people holding pens like this like this like uh, this is the way <laughs> one ought to hold it um, I mean other types of traditions might hold brushes in a particular way but a pen or a, a regular brush ought to be held in this way lightly in the fingers so the movement is from the wrist and not necessarily from the fingers so it's right to get this bit correct I'll just say a little bit about one or two people that I know uh, that you might want to look up and one is a certain um, Dr. Manny Ling from Sutherland University here in England University um, he's actually uh, of Chinese Hong Kong origin and uh, he has some fascinating things to say about the relationship between the East and West. He does his calligraphy in a Western style, but the whole idea of being centered and letting the chi flow into the calligraphy. Um, I think one of the main directions that I would take my lettering, and I'm going to use now some chalks. Now these are just um, artists' pastels pastels as some might say um, <clears throat> but once you have if you look on the computer or in magazines or on the TV you'll see lettering um, uh, of various types and sorts so let's say for instance you've got a big letter A that is like that bit flat bit straightforward you might then have an option for M um, what's the word a bevel in it well if you use the art materials as best you might you're likely to get a shadow down this side of that bar likewise down here and a shadow there and a shadow underneath the bottom as if the light had been coming from this direction now this is just with a pastel now you can make this a little bit more shadowy just by rubbing it in with your finger so these artistically effects are what you might use to get the effects with the lettering so now we have a sort of an embossed look about it and you might also then feel that if it was stood up somewhat then you get in a line here that you just see neither of them there get a sort of 3D effect and if you had that then you would certainly I would have thought had a very very dark interior and then this bit would probably smudge down likewise you might colour this at the edge You, now that's just the letter A you can play about with all the letters and with, with different colours too the other thing you might have is let me use uh, this big fella here have a letter just do it simply like that if there was a light coming this way you might also then like to have 
a shadow appear. So a shadow would just simply appear on this side to make the whole thing stand out. And therefore, you could develop all sorts of uh, interesting ideas. So if we, but let's put the word Gillian. It's a J actually. <laughs> Now let's move on to a, a larger size because much of the work I do is bigger. If you haven't got paper this big, newspaper, A, B, C, D, E, F, and let's go H. It's an arm movement. Again, I'm sitting well <coughs> and uh, I'm just going to the pastels are rather good for this actually because they're not going to dry and go hard on me. Look at that, lovely. H I. You need to know also and learn where everything goes. I'll come on to a couple of letters which are vital for this. For instance, the, um, the letter N. These bits here, by the way, are called serifs and they can come in various shapes. These are just straight and I'll curve them. I J N. Let's do N. Now N is a letter which has got to be like this, so that's the thick part and these are the things. You need to learn these things. And The serif only goes to there, right on the top of there, not down there, and one down there. Let me do this again, I love this. like it. Um, S, S, very tricky letter because S of course you start that line if you're doing it in one that line then becomes the other side of this so ah, that'll be Jeff and then there are so many different forms of S there's an S looking like that I learned as a kid there's an S looking like that sometimes do an S like that let's move on to another letter just there's so much to be said about this lettering stuff and let's say the letter T for instance how about this I've got to do it and there's this sort of lettering Tell her. the word telegraph which uh, I've looked at all my life because my local paper had this old English sort of style Oops, there we go and then the letter T we could also do that T and there's a T that's like that there's a T that looks like that it's really a matter of just having fun and exploring as many letters and styles and forms that you really want. So, that's as much as I can say for now. It's I hope that's been of interest some basic ideas of how to start lettering and the things that interested me when I started many years ago and some very simple tools that you can use just pens and paper to explore and enjoy the lettering I don't know why it works but it does hand lettering love it of course you can also go to my website thank you uh, where you can find an opportunity to buy my downloaded video I've got two in fact downloaded videos about um, introduction to chalkboard artwork and more chalkboard artwork. Anyway, thanks for listening and watching. See you again next time. <laughs>